you sound awesome, all right? Uh, you know, as I look around, as I kind of go into this, this room, I'm very uh, jealous to see what Mosaic has become. When I was here in two thousand, all the way back in 2007, uh, Mosaic was just an idea. I think it was a small group with Cha back then, and now it blew up to be just a, a hub of ideas and awesome people. Um, uh, I was enrolled in the Andrew program. Uh, I was sorting through some things theologically and ministerially, and I loved seminary, I loved theology, I loved learning about ministry. Um, and then I took summer Hebrew, and uh, <laughs> that changed my mind about seminary a lot. True story, um, I, copped, I copped it out, and I, uh, I transitioned to an MA program, MACS, which is the baby MDiv, that's what we called it back then. <laughs> MACS, who's in that? Oh, okay, all right. Um, so I quit school for a bit. I graduated in 2010, got married, uh, became a pastor within a year. And uh, after a year that I had an itch for school again, I wanted to learn more about God and theology. So um, I went back from my MDiv, not to Trinity, sorry to say that, went to North Park. So our, our brothers and sisters just south of us. So it's been an awesome ride. Um, I've been a, a pastor for eight years, and the last three years, as, as uh, um, Daniel said, has been um, church planting at uh, New Abbey. I have less than seven minutes to do a devotion, and so um, I told Daniel, man, I'm Baptist. I got, I got Baptist roots, and so I'm not sure how this is going to work, um, but I'll try. I'll try. So we all know uh, the miracle of the five loaves and the two fish, right? The, the feeding of the 5,000, and the context is this. Jesus Christ and his disciples are doing awesome ministry, and they're, they're gathering people. People are following him. They're hearing about um, what he's talking about, uh, all his healing that he's doing. And on this particular day, um, there are just thousands of people there. Uh, Matthew says there's 5,000 besides women and children. You guys know this. You guys are in seminary. So there's potentially 10,000 to 20,000 people right there with Jesus and his disciples. And there's a problem. The night is approaching and everyone is getting hungry. And so the disciples, you know, thinking practically and logistically, they had to make a move. If we're going to feed these people, we have to send them out right now before night comes. And so uh, these people could go to the neighboring villages to find food and lodging. And so the disciples bring that up to Jesus. Hey, we've got to send these guys out. Um, we have nothing here. Go. And then you know what Jesus says? He says, no, uh, we're good. We'll feed them. He said, we're good. And then as the dialogue unfolds in, in the, all, the, all the Gospels, because all the Gospels have this miracle recorded, um, you can kind of feel the nervousness creep up and the frustration in the disciples' minds as they kind of just kind of rant to Jesus. Like, we don't have what it takes uh, to feed all these people. Right? Uh, Philip says, it'll take 200 denarii to feed all, all of them. And the NIV translates that as, that would take more than a half a, a year's wage. It's a lot of money, money they don't have. And even if they did have that money, where would they go to get all the bread uh, to feed all these people? So logistically, uh, if you guys are type A people, uh, this is just a disaster. <laughs> We just had this event, and now what are we going to do? Well, I mean, we had food here on the front end. And now we have 10,000, 20,000 people who are hungry. And so, again, the disciples are really nervous. There's nothing wrong with, you know, how they're feeling. Um, I mean, we're human, and so we think logistically and practically. And then Jesus says here in Mark 6, 38, which is... Uh, if you really think about it, a uh, very profound, and this has been formative for me as I kind of entered into this narrative. And he asks this, well, how many loaves do you have? And then he says, go and see. And so long story short, you guys know this, uh, they find a boy uh, with five loaves of bread and two fish. Uh, barely enough for two fish sandwiches, That's, and then an extra bread. There's really nothing there. Um, but then the miracle happens. Jesus uh, thanks God, and he, he prays over the food. And lo and behold, uh, the food uh, became sufficient to feed the thousands of people, to feed the multitude. And um, after they're all done, there's even extra left, 12 baskets 
um, exceeding um, what they needed. And so, again, we, we all know that story. And if you, if you are a minister or uh, training to be a minister, church planning, church planner, um, this right here uh, teaches us a couple things, right? And so there's two things I want us to chew on. One is this. Um, God's power is not limited by our lack of resources, right? We've got to remember that. Uh, God works, and he's powerful, um, and he does his thing no matter the circumstance, right? Regardless of your lack of resources, regardless of your limitations, regardless of what you don't have, God's kingdom will still advance. His gospel will still advance, right? His church will still be built. And um, just to be very clear, I'm not anti-money, right? I'm not anti-program. I, I promise you I'm not anti-money. If you have extra money, I will take it. I'll prove it to you. Um, but I do believe there's a posture thing here at play, right? And so the question uh, we have to ask is, you know, what exactly are we trusting in, right, as we visioneer for your potential or future ministries? What are we trusting in? The resources or the power of God? I was in the, the Philippines not too long ago in August, and um, we toured uh, one island. We went to a bunch of different ministries and met um, a few pastors, and really, according to our American church standards, these guys have no resourcing at all. No resourcing. They don't have the degrees, they don't have the buildings, they don't have um, the manpower. Um, if they were here, um, by our societal standards, they would be living way below the poverty line. Um, Again, no money, no Facebook ads, no billboards, no social media campaign. Um, yet, they actually believed their theology. They actually believed that God was powerful to do work, to advance his kingdom. And we have these people, again, pastors with nothing, yet they're doing amazing work. All because they believe in a powerful, almighty God. So that's one. God's power is not limited by what we don't have. And then two, um, it's, it's very related. Uh, God's power works through what we do have. What we do have. And so, what do you have is the question. You know, a lot of times as a, as a church planner, we, I always think of what I don't have and what uh, I need to do my next step. But I believe that God has already given us, me, something that we have not tapped into. We all have something that God wants us to, uh, to steward through and for the kingdom. And so the question is the same for us, the same question that the Jesus asked his disciples. How many loaves do you have? You know, go and see. Now, uh, I hope you're not waiting for the new Abbey multitude story. Okay, I don't got that. I'm not that cool. Um, we're three years in, like as Daniel said, and I don't have my story of feeding 5,000 people. I, I don't got that. We probably have 75 people who call New Abbey home, and uh, half of them uh, wake up on Sunday, right? So I don't have the multitudes here. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I think uh, if we're to enter into this narrative, I think we're in the season of discovering or identifying, identifying what our five loaves are. What are our two fish? What do we have? What do we have in this little group that we could steward for the kingdom? And yeah, humanly, um, it's, it's very nerve-wracking. And it's frustrating at times to know um, what we don't have or how we could use it. Uh, but at the same time, it's fun seeing how God is working all this out. Right? Um, my knee brace here is very related to my story, and it's related to what you're about to do. Don't be scared. Um, but about a year and some ago, uh, we, we were about to do, or we did the same activity you guys are about to do. So we are around uh, the round table. And it was a time of identifying our five loaves and two fish. And at that table, we had a couple guys who did jiu-jitsu, me and my brother-in-law and some other guy. Hey, we do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. What can we do? How can we advance the kingdom through this? We were crazy, but, you know, we, 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 we chewed on it. Um, lo and behold, we, we used our mosaic fund to start a Saturday uh, morning jiu-jitsu club. And uh, we're not bringing droves of people in. <laughs> But at the same time, we're bringing people who would never enter the doors of a church. Uh, we're bringing in dudes who want nothing to do with the church. They, they don't want to associate with Christians. And this is our hour and a half. 
uh, just to pour into them and be Jesus to them as we kill each other, right? And uh, unfortunately, a month ago, I, I um, tore my LCL, but I'm okay, all right? So ignore the injury. <laughs> um, know this. Um, God is on your side. You have gifts that ought to be stored. You have to discover them. And know the two things. His power is not limited by our lack of resources. And he, and he works through what you already have. So how many loaves and fish do you have in your possession right now? Go and see. Mm-hmm.